today we're going to uh, continue with uh, 3D graphics. We started last time. Uh, this is going to this is going to go on for the next uh, week anyway. Uh, I'm not going to get very very far into 3D graphics. I'm going to get far enough in. So that you can you can actually uh, do uh, create web pages using it, and that'll uh, at that point if you want to go any further, there's plenty of ways to learn how to do that. But uh, I'll, I'll find a way. There's a few things I want to mention. Uh, actually, part of the stuff is from emails. I'm answering some emails at the same time. Uh, it's when you when you go into 3D graphics. First thing that you notice that happens is you can't see the code easily. It isn't obvious how to get to the code. If you control U, it doesn't do anything. It, do, it doesn't seem to give you any access to it, but it's really there. And actually, I didn't even know it myself until a student uh, last semester discovered how to do it. It's a kind of a peculiar idea, but uh, what you do is, uh, you know, you normally can uh, click down and get a, get a selection that says show you the, uh, show it to you, show you the code, but it doesn't do that because the whole screen is covered, and when you cl click down with your mouse, nothing happens because the program itself is capturing the mouse, so it doesn't allow it to do anything that's outside of it being captured. So here's what you do. You go up here to uh, these three dots up here and, and press the button. And you know, it says 100% there. It's got a minus sign and a plus sign. Press the minus sign. To bring the, the window screen, you'll see it drop to about that size when you click it once. And then in here, you can right click your mouse and get, the, get it to show you the source code. Okay, it's kind of a weird thing, but that's what happens. So notice if you click in here, it won't show it to you because it's capturing the mouse. Out here, it's outside of the window, so it doesn't capture the mouse. But you have to shut the window down a little bit to make it do that. And that's how you do it. That, that's, it worked. I, I told somebody in line, they, they were able to get it off. Just from what I said, so it's no problem. Uh, <clears throat> um, some things I want to cover. The first program... Uh, in today's series uh, was uh, a program that created a box, a, a three-dimensional box. And you can, you can take the box and you can look at it, you can go to it, or you can go around it. You, know, you can look at the box using the, the uh, arrow keys, okay? And the first part, it allows you to do that, it allows you to, to navigate around the box. Um, 
how to make that box is actually something that I want to talk about first. That's the first thing I want to talk about. When you, uh, when you create any kind of objects in these languages, there's two ways you can create them. One is they have a set group of them that are already done. They have spheres, cylinders, cones, uh, boxes. They have all those things done. So you can just say, make me a box, make me a cylinder, and it does it. Okay? So uh, those are the easy ones. If you want to make like someone's head, head, you have to do something quite different. You have to go into a program, and you have to actually make the, the wireframe structure of the head and, and tell it to put a face on it or something. So it's a lot more work. Uh, but <clears throat> the uh, week after next, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'll get into the program. There's a free program that allows you to do all that stuff. It's, uh, it's not easy, though. There's two things in programming that you've probably already figured out from this course. You either have a lot of different kinds of code you have to write, or you've got a bunch of things you've got to pull down from, from the windows. They do, you do it either way. They're both equally difficult. One of them, you have to remember what the commands are to write them down. The other one, you don't have to remember the commands, but you got to find them in all the different pull-downs everywhere. So that's, uh, that's the problem with going to uh, a piece of software that does something for you. They've taken away the idea that you can write commands, but they've introduced the idea that you have to pull down a bunch of stuff, which can make it equally as complicated. At one point, Microsoft had carried it out to a point with Word that it was a big joke. I mean, anybody online was making all kinds of jokes about it because they had put so many pull-down things in there. Uh, I don't know what the answer for that is. It seems like when you have a, a piece of software, it has to do certain things. Like if it has to do a, you know, a thousand different things, you've got to have a thousand different ways e either to say it or a thousand different ways to pull down to it. You still have to have the commands, otherwise you can't do it. Now what I'm doing here in this course is I'm cutting away all the hard stuff and just giving you easy things to do. If you had to do hard stuff, you couldn't do it with what we have. You'd have to go and learn a little bit more about it. But you can make a pretty good web page with what we have, and, and a, one that's kind of a normal one that you know doesn't got anything kinky in it, so they work pretty good. But uh, if you really wanted to get into this stuff deeply, you'd have to take a true programming course to figure out how it all works. This is not a programming course, really. Um, so. So basically, that's the route I'm following, and I think it works out pretty good. Uh, okay, to start off with, there's two things. When you create an object, uh, whether it's a cube or a sphere or whatever you create on, uh, in your program, uh, there's a line to do that. You say, make this object, okay? And I'm going to show you how we make the first one. I'm going to show you what the rules are for it, because it's, uh, it's a cube, and it's the first object to make. It looks like this. Supposing I want to make a cube. And I want it to be 20 by 20 by 20. Okay, I want to make a cube. It's 20 by 20 by 20. Uh, that's in that's in there. That's not in pixels. That's in their universal space. We don't know what that is, to tell you the truth. And it's really hard to figure that out. But once you see something, if you build a, a thing that's one by one, then you'll see what the, what level they're working at. And by the way, it doesn't make a lot of difference because if you pull that thing in close, it's bigger anyway. It looks large. If you push it away, it looks smaller. So the numbers don't really mean a lot, except how they relate to each other. So as long as you're consistent from object to object about how big they are, like if the house is 20, the person's 6, you know, that might be okay. But if the house is 20 and the person's 60, then that wouldn't be okay, because no matter what you do, it's going to look bad. So anyways, I'm going to leave the numbering, to the sizes of things to you. But here's, if you suppose you want to create a cube, and uh, you want it to have a single color, you want it to just be like red or blue or some color, whatever it is. Here's how you do it. Uh, in the program, uh, after, in the body of the program, you have to have this to begin with. Let's see. You have to have a script and a slash script. And you have to say variable. And then, Whatever word you put here is yours. This is the name of your cube. You give it your own name, whatever it is. So if you put my here, then my is the name of the cube, okay? And then you equal these. These things have to be done exactly like this. This is all lowercase right here. Uh, make cube. This is, this is all lowercase. And then you put here 
then you put the x and the y in the z dimensions of the thing. So the x, the y, and the z. You, you, you decide on those. That's, that's your decision, how big you want to make it. In the x direction, in the y direction, and in the z direction. All fat things, okay? Then, uh, then what you do is you uh, put the color in. The color looks like this. Zero, x, that's a zero right there. X, uh, f, f, zero, 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 zero. That'll produce a red. That'll produce a red one. Oops. And that's how you make a cube. And that cube will all have one color. Whatever color you decide it's going to be is right here. That's the color of the cube. And these are the dimensions, the x and the y and the z, dimensions of the cube in those space numbers, OK? And uh, when you're going to talk about this cube, you have to talk about it uh, by its official name. Once you create it, you've got to talk about it by its official name. And its official name, in this case, because my is, you created this thing called my. And within my, within this my space that you created, there is a cube, and that cube has uh, it has a position of x, position of y, position of z. So what they do is they put dots between those things. So what you would say up in the uh, up in the program. By the way, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Instead of doing that, what I'll do is uh, I'll erase this. If you've got this clear, what this is right here, this is just simply how you create the cube. If you want more cubes, you put another script and another cube and another cube. Like, put as many cubes as you want, okay? Put different cubes. Now, here's what I do. Uh, it's possible to make a plane, just a plane like that, in this language. It's possible to do that. But what it does is it introduces some things that I don't want to get into right now. So I, I said what I'm going to do is something quite different than they normally do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say instead of creating a plane, we're going to create a cube with a very small depth to it. So, for, so it'll be, in the x direction it'll be big, in the y direction it'll be big, it'll be like that. But in the z direction we'll make it teeny weeny, like 0.1 or something. So it'll be very, very thin. So it's almost a plane. And that gives us a little bit of latitude. In other words, what it does is it allows us to make planes and cubes with the same instruction. And that really is helpful, okay, for our purposes right now. So basically, this right here is the... Uh, is, is uh, the way we're creating a plane, which is just simply one something to look at, and doesn't have any depth to it. We're going to give it a little depth. So I would do this right here. If I were going to do that, I'd say it's 20 by 20, 20 in x, 20 in y, and 0 0.1, 0 0.1 in the z direction, which makes it very thin, a little thin wafer. Okay, and that's how we're going to create the uh, the cubes that are actually our planes that are actually cubes. Okay, so. After, if that's all okay, if you have any questions about that, I'll get rid of it. And now I'm going to uh, talk about what happens in the program, how this stuff's actually used in the program. Okay. So remember, the thing is called my. That's anything I'm, gonna, I'm just making a cube. So in the program, you want to do two things. You want to be able to locate that object someplace, and you want to be able to uh, rotate it, the object. So you have two things. You have its position, x, y, z, you have to put it in some position. And you also have to rotate it over one of its axes to get it in the position you want it in. Okay? So that's the first step we have to do. To begin with, the function that you do all this stuff in is called uh, render. Everything is done in a function called render. Uh, that name isn't absolutely required, but everybody uses it, so you should use it. It's, I mean, because if you watch, look at someone else's programs, or you're going to see render, and you're going to see it everywhere. They, they say render in every place. And so the render uh, function is where you tell the objects where they're going to be and what angle they're going to be at. Okay? And here's the instructions to make them do that. First thing, the object is called my. We call it my. So there's, oh, by the way, is, I, I'm sorry, I've got to do one other thing. got to do one other thing here. Uh, this, this little line here, uh, right here, i got to write it exactly right.
this is, what, what that instruction does, let me see if it's capital L, is a capital A and a capital uh, frame, capital F. The, the first, the request is a lowercase. And the only reason why they did that is because it, it's actually, they want to request animation frame, but they wanted you to be able to see where the words break up, so they put the capitals in and make it look readable. Okay, what that thing does, when you come out of, when you're in render, you hit that thing right there, what it says is, after you build this page and draw it on the screen, go back and build another, the next version of the page and draw it on the screen. So if you have something animated, you'll draw it, everything in the first position. They'll go up, recalculate where they should be in the second position, then draw them again and calculate. So what this thing does is it bounces up, keeps bouncing back. It's, it's just like the, uh, the one we used earlier, only this one doesn't have, you don't control when it does it. It does it at the best possible time. It figures out how fast the animation can go on its own. We don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to say speed 30 milliseconds or anything like that. Okay, that's a big advantage, by the way. Okay, so uh, we've got this. Now what I want to do is I want to say uh, my dot cube dot position dot x equals something. Zero would say it's right in the middle of the axis. It's right in the middle of the universe. X, Y, Z, it's right, right in the middle. That's the center position would be there. You say my uh, cube dot position dot y also in the middle of the universe. My dot cube dot position dot z also in the middle of the universe. So when the first cube would appear, it would appear, if this is the x, y, z axis right here, it would appear right here, right at the x, y, z axis. That's where, it, that's where it starts. All the objects you create immediately start there unless you tell it otherwise. Even if I didn't put this here, it would know it was here. Okay, but if I'm going to draw the thing, I have to put its name here. And if I put its name here, I have to say, where is it? So I put the zeros in. Just give it a position. So basically, it's going to be this right here. And as it looks now, if you look at the thing, if you look at the cube, what you see is this right here. You see the cube's face on because it always has the z direction pointed towards you, and it always has the x, the y, and the z. So therefore, you're looking, you're not looking at a cube, you're looking at a square, but it is a cube. It's just it would look like a square, okay, because you wouldn't see the edges of it any place. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's how you position everything, every object you create has to be given a position of some kind. And then, every object you create also has to be given a rotation, and it looks like this. There's three instructions for that. My cube dot rotation equals zero. We're going to play with these in a minute, but I just want to get them down. My dot cube dot rotation. Whoops, that's wrong. Should be dot x. So here's what I've said. I've said, okay, I created a thing that's located in the middle like that, but because I've set all the rotations to zero, it hasn't rotated this way, or that way, or this way. It hasn't rotated in any direction. So the cube is right, still pointed straight at you, okay? Now the question is, um, if you wanted to move the, posi the, the position of the thing, suppose you created two of these cubes, okay? If you create two of them, and you, and you put them both at zero, they're both going to be, there's, they don't touch each other, so therefore they're right inside of each other. They don't be, you know, as you look at the second one you draw, is going to be the one that's there. They're both there, but you're going to only see one of them. And the thing is, that's because if they're both the same size and in the same spot, you don't see the other one. But it's, it's, it's like, you know, plastered over it. You don't see it. So what you have to do to make two objects separate from each other, you have to move them away from each other so you actually can see them. So, for example, if I created two of them, and one of them was called my, and the other one was called yours, or something like that, some other name. If I wanted to move the my one away from the middle so that I could actually see it, 
I can say, move it to, for example, I can move it to 20 right here. And what would happen is, one Q would move out to 20 in the, in the positive x direction, and the other one would remain there if there was another one called there. So in other words, if there's two of them, mine would, I'd move one of them out of the way. And now you can see the two cubes. They're both visible now, but they wouldn't be originally if they were the same size. So therefore, uh, the first thing you want to do is when you have more than one object in a universe, you've got to start putting them, breaking them away from each other so you can start dealing with them. Uh, you can could, you could move this one uh, you know, in any direction you want, but the, the easy one for us to see is just to move it in the x or in the y direction. Just so If you move in the z direction, it's not going to help you much because the, the front one's going to block the back one, see, and that's not going to see it. So basically, that's it. That's how you, that's how you do it. You, you, you position it so that you can see it. Now, when you have a cube and you want to rotate it, so look at this cube right here. I'm going to draw it in three dimensions, but it isn't in 3D. You don't see this because it's behind it. Okay, what happens is when you want to rotate this cube, there's an x-axis that goes through it this way, and a y-axis that goes through it this way, and a z-axis that comes out this way. If you want to rotate the cube over the x-axis, supposing I want to rotate it, okay, that's not while we're there, I better talk about this. Uh, it rotates things not in degrees, but it rotates in radians, and that's very critical. If you have a circle, like so, okay, um, half a circle is uh, pi radians, okay, a quarter of a circle is pi over two radians. And this is 3 pi, <clears throat> pi over 2 radians, or pi, okay. But basically, the thing is that 90 degrees, if you twist something 90 degrees, it's, it's the pi over 2 is what it is. You put it 180 degrees, it's pi, and if you just turn it around all the way around here, it's 3 pi over 2. But either one of these, pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, what it will produce is, if you have the original position here, if it turns up to here, it will now be perpendicular to what it was originally when it started, okay? So in the case of this cube right here, if I rotate this cube over the z-axis right here, this, this is the z-axis, if I rotate it uh, pi over 2, what I'm doing is I'm turning it so that this side right here goes up to the top. It's turning it up to the top like that. So therefore, if I turn it like uh, over right here, command from, the, from uh, JavaScript is capital M-A-T-H dot capital P capital I and divide it by 2. <clears throat> by dividing it by 2, you're turning, this, is, this right here is 180 degrees, pi is 180 degrees, so therefore divided by 2 makes it just this right here. <clears throat> so if you, if you say position it like that, what happens is, it rotates over the z-axis. It starts here and it rotates over the z-axis like that. It goes to 90 degrees. So anything you rotate over the z-axis at 90 degrees is perpendicular to what it was before. That's the first step you have to realize. If you rotate it, then if you rotate it over this axis here, math dot pi divided by 2, the same thing over the, uh, <clears throat> the y-axis, what you're doing then is you're taking something, if it started in its original position, uh, it would be like this, and you'd be rotating at 90 degrees over this vertical axis right here, the y-axis, okay? This one before was x uh, z-axis that was over here. And then the x-axis, if you're going to do it the same amount right here over the x-axis, what you'd be doing is tipping it over the, over the x-axis this way. Okay, so you got to kind of get into your head what tips over, what goes over what. The, the x-axis, you sort of go this way. The y-axis, you sort of go this way. The z-axis, you go that way, you're looking into the thing. And those are the three rotations that control the orientation of the object when you first build it, or any time, you can move it or anything. So therefore, the two things you have to know is, is where the object is and what angles it's at with respect to those three axes, okay? <clears throat> um, so that's the first thing when you build something, you want to decide where is it going to be and what angles are going to be at. You have to make that decision yourself, and you put the right numbers in over there. And the numbers, you can put any numbers you want. For example, you can put, uh, I can put uh, math dot pi divided by 3. That's 60 degrees because it's 180 degrees in a whole half a circle, and that's pi. So a third of that, a third of that pi is a third of a half a circle. That's just 60 degrees. 
or you can divide it by 6 and make it 30, uh, 30 degrees. Right here, that would make it 30 degrees. So you can, you can actually, you can use that. It's kind of, kind of cool. That's why, that's why they do it. Uh, pi is the, the number that you use. You pull that out of, out of uh, you pull this out of the uh, JavaScript toolbox, and you just simply divide it by any number you want to get whatever angle that you're looking for. Okay. Uh, if uh, I, I'm not going to get into the details of how to change from degrees to radians, it's too much work right now. But basically, that's the idea of how you get the general positioning on things, how you get them. I will tell you one more thing, though. If you divide this by four right here, by four. That's like the circle's this way, right? And if you divide it in half, then you divide it in half again, that's 45 degrees there. So divided by 4 is 45 degrees. So you take the original thing, turn it 45 degrees, and it's just well, pi divided by 4. So those numbers are very handy. Divided by 4, divided by 3, divided by 2 are very handy. Okay. So uh, next thing is we want to, uh, uh, if I were to, uh, have two objects, and I wanted to rotate those objects. I, want to, I have two objects. Let's say I have this one, then I have another one exactly like it, with your, another word out here, that's all. But they both are exactly alike. If I wanted to change both of those objects, there's two ways I can do it, as I mentioned last time. One way is I can go around the objects, and they'll both change. I'll be looking at them from different positions, so it'll look like the two will be rotating. Okay, around each other. The other way to do it is to rotate this object a certain amount on whichever axis you want, and then rotate the other object on a certain amount, whatever axis, whatever amount you want. So, for example, if you have these two guys looking at you like this, if I just go around like so, what I'm going to see next is going to be this, their sides, like uh, so. I'm going to see their sides, and then I'm going to see their back sides, I'm going to see all that stuff, okay? But if you turn them on their own, if you told them to turn on their own, then uh, one might turn one way, and the other one might turn the other way. So they, they might have different orientations, because they're turning on their own axis, they can do what they want. But that's quite different than you looking at it and going around the thing. Even though, in most cases, if these are still, are static, you're going to get the same effect uh, as you would if they rotated. Now, not if they rotated, uh, two of them rotated, no. If two of them rotate, it's not going to be the same. No, it's two of them rotate in a different way than happens when you go around it. When you go around it, they're static, and they get in front of each other, and they're still blocking the same way. If they both start rotating, that's not going to look like you're going around it. It's going to look like two things rotating. So two objects changes the, the situation. One object, you can't tell the difference. Two objects, you can start to tell the difference between what's going on. So, uh, <clears throat> but I just want you to, I'm saying those words so that when you see the things start to do stuff, when you build things and they start to do things, so you get some idea of what's happening uh, inside of them. Uh, so you can get away from the actual what you see and try to get what you see to, to make sense in terms of what you're doing in the program. So because that's one of the hard things that happens. Okay, so I, I think I pretty well talked that one through, and I want to give up on that for now. But uh, let's go to the next thing. Oh, there's one other thing I want to cover a little bit. I'll just talk about it quickly. Uh, you guys have probably seen stuff like this. Uh, I've written things in some programs, and you see, you see my words out there in the distance, okay? These two slash marks right here make anything after it a comment. The program doesn't see it. It prints. You see it on the screen when you, when you write the program out, but it doesn't affect the program in any way. Now, those two slashes says everything after this is just, just put it in, just put it in, this, in the listing of the program, but don't do anything. Okay. It's called a comment line. And comment lines, you could, for example, I, I do this all the time. This is one of the things I, I like to do. If I think there's something wrong with this line right here, and I want to just get rid of it for a while, just to see if the program runs without it, I'll just put two lines in front of it like that. And it's dead. It doesn't, the program doesn't see it anymore. And it'll run everything else except that line. And then I'll get to see what it does without that line to see if the line affects it or not. Okay? If you got a really big long line, you're not sure. Now, this is not true in HTML. It's only true in JavaScript. When you're down in HTML, you can't do that. You got to do this when you're in a function, a JavaScript function. Uh, and when you're a JavaScript function, if you do that, that line will stop operating. So if you're getting some funny numbers and you think this line is causing trouble, uh, you know, kill it. Run the program and see what happens without it. And you might see that that is the line. Then you got to figure out what's wrong with it. 
That's one of the ways you can debug. It's a kind of crude, but that's, that's a helpful, helpful way to debug. Um, I think I pretty much ran out of the stuff I want to talk about with this one. Uh, I'm going to keep going, though, because there's some things I want to talk about. I'm going to sit down at the computer and we'll do them as we're, as we're running the programs. I'll detail what's actually going on. Uh, I'm going to introduce, and during this session today, I'm going to introduce the idea of texture, putting texture onto things. So, for example, uh, you can have a square like this. You can paint it red, white, or blue, or whatever, using this kind of program here. But it's also possible to put images on it, pictures on it. Okay, we're going to do that today. And when you put a picture on a square, I'm, I'm just going to do it for squares to begin with. Uh, you have to do a little bit of work on the picture before you put it on the square. Here's why. In, in the computer, now, I don't know how they've written these new ver I, you know, I don't look at their code to see how they write the code for the code. But they, they all mention it all the time. They're still living in a kind of a, a early version of this program. And what they require is that all the pictures that you put onto something that's perfectly square have to have dimensions in pixels that are multiples of two multiples of two. So for example, if I want to put a picture on here, if it's uh, 128 by 128, it'll fit perfectly and look just perfectly natural. If the picture is 256 by 256, it'll look perfectly natural. If it's 512 by 512, it'll look perfectly natural. 1024 and so forth. If it's any of these numbers, it'll be perfect because these two numbers right here are, are, it's two raised to a power. This is two raised to a power, two raised. They, they like these numbers, 128, 250, 512, 102, 4. And what you do is, before you use a picture for any of your squares, you should go into uh, uh, X and View, and, and in X and View, go to the part that allows you to change the dimensions of your picture, and change it to, you can tell it, say 256 by 256, you can tell it that. Don't, don't have, there's a button that says keep the original proportions, don't let it do that. Kill that button, make sure it doesn't do that to you. Then you say 256 by 256, and it'll give you a picture that's 256 by 256 perfectly. And then it will work, fit perfectly on any of these squares we have. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I would say 512 is the better. If you're going to use 20 by 20, 512 is better. The more, you, the bigger they are, there's pluses and minuses, the bigger they are, the more exact the picture will be, it'll look far better. But the bigger they are, the slower they'll be printed onto the surface. So you could conceivably get something uh, 2048, for example, would probably slow the thing down. You might start to see a little bit of slowness in the program. If you use 512, that's a, that's a pretty good one, pretty precise, and it's not bad. 512 by 512. 256 is a common one, because most people put images on the thing that they don't have to be perfect. They just want to see kind of what they look like, that's all. I mean, they look like what they're supposed to look like, but they aren't. They have precise photography. Okay, so there's that, and let's see what else I want to tell you about here. I think that's, oh, and one more thing I've added to the programs today is uh, in the last program, you could, <clears throat> you could rotate the object by hitting the two arrows. I've added two more arrows today, which allows you to go in towards the object or away from the object. Okay, and I'm going to talk about the programming for that, how you do it. Uh, there is one little thing that you should know. Uh, when your your keyboard, anybody that plays WoW knows this. Keyboards, you know, have all kinds of keys, and you, you get into the position where you want to make the right keys work for you the best way. Uh, you have to make the decision about which keys you want to do what. But if you have an object on the screen, and you want to have the capability of telling it to rotate this way, and you also want to have the uh, the, uh, the ability to, for you to rotate the camera this way, then you're going to need two sets of keys two sets of keys, one to control the object and one to set of keys to control you, the camera. So uh, which ones you choose, it doesn't make any difference, but you can choose whichever ones you want. Basically, you go into the program that tells you what a key's value is, and then you use that key's value. I'm going to show you. you. Use that key's value to say, if they press this key, turn the object this way a certain amount. Or if they press this key, turn the camera this amount. So you're going to have two different control things. If you have a vertical up and down, like I, I use the up and down arrows to go in and come back out again. So I can't use them for anything else. I'm, I'm stuck with that. I, I, I can change it. But if I want to go in and out, I've got that set up. And I've got the left and right for the camera set up. So therefore, if I want to rotate any of the objects, I have got to use a different set of keys. And that's the trick. It's how you decide to do that is based on kind of your own uh, 
preferences. But the user has to, you have to tell them how to do it if they're going to run your program. Okay, so I think that's about the basic stuff that I want to cover. And uh, there's one other thing that I, that's not basic, but I will be covering down the road a little bit. And I'll just stop on it for a minute before I turn the camera on, before I turn the uh, projector on here. Uh, when you have uh, animated objects, like we have had in, in our web pages, you just simply say, move it to here, move it to here, move it to here, move it to here. But you can't do that uh, when you have uh, this. Because you, you don't have one object. You have several objects. And if you just slide that across the screen, it doesn't look like somebody's walking. It doesn't give you the impression of walking. Okay. So what they've done is, They've created what they call a hierarchical situation. It's a hierarchy. And it, it, it's actually the most sensible way to approach it. But if you don't think about it, you might, you might think, well, how, how do they do that? You know, do they have just different pictures like they do in the GIF? They have a picture of this position, then that position, and that position. Yes, you can do that. As long as all, all he's doing is walking the same way over and over again, you can have a simple GIF to it. But supposing you had something you want to be able to have the guy bend down and pick something up or move around, a game character. How do you control it? How do you make that work in the world we're in? Well, what you do is uh, you take the, the human body and you break it up. Let me draw a headline picture here. Here's the human body right here, sort of. And, uh, and so you have the human body, and what you have, first of all, you've got to realize it articulates in different places. So what you do is you break it up into a series of objects, individual objects. This cube, that cube, this cube, the cylinder, that cylinder, the cylinder. You break it up. And you can break it up like at this point here, and at his elbows. And his back should have a couple of breaks in so he can bend over. This one right here at his neck, he has to bend his neck over. Uh, then he has to have one at his knees and at his hips so he can walk. And those are kind of standard breakup points for the, they're the most primitive breakup points. With those you can do quite a bit. Okay, you can make the thing move quite a bit. So basically now he can move his head backward and forward. He can swing his, uh, well, they would actually do, probably do it this way. It would be a better way of doing it. They'd say, let's do it this way. That would be better. And they have a joint here. So in other words, they have the joints on the shoulders. So the shoulder joint moves and the elbow joint moves and so forth. And they would set it up like that. Uh, they have a thing called motion capture. I don't know if you've, ever, you've probably seen it before. Basically they have a room. And they put these dots on, on people. And the dots, the cameras all around the room, and the dots are seen by the cameras. And what it does is, as the person moves, the cameras do a calculation. They, they see the dots, and then it does a calculation and tells them what, what position that this structure is in. It, 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 take, it takes immediately their entire motion and puts it into one of these structures. And then what they can do is they can reskin the structure with a different character, and they move just like the original person, because this is the skeletal structure that was. When the person was moving in real life, the uh, program was building this character moving, this stick character moving around, okay? And then later what they can say is put a different uh, body on this character to make it move the same way as this character. So that's why they did Avatar and all that stuff. They did the same thing. They do with faces too, by the way. They have certain points in the faces that are animated, and they're, they're hierarchical also. Now I want to show you something interesting here. This right here is another point. If you look at this character, uh, it looks like a human body with a bunch of dots on it. But the computer doesn't see it that way. The computer sees it differently. The computer says this right here is the critical dot. That's the critical dot that does everything. Then it says from that dot, this dot comes. From that dot, this dot comes. Then it sticks out here. And on the right leg, the same thing happens. It sees that. This is a hierarchy, see? And then it says, okay, this thing here, even though it's upright to us, it doesn't care. It just cares that it's a hierarchy. So what it does is it goes down, and this dot goes here, and then what happens is uh, it hits this middle dot right here, and then it goes out to this one, then out to the elbow, like so, and the other one goes the other way to the other shoulder, out to the other elbow, and so forth. And when you look at the, the, the mathematical or the actual uh, uh, design of this character, as far as the computer knows, 
It's simple hierarchy. It starts at the top here, it takes one of these three branches, and when it gets down here, it takes one of these two branches. In other words, what it does is, whatever this thing does, the entire body does. If the middle of the body goes this way, the entire body goes this way. Uh, whatever the, uh, that, that right there is the middle of the body, oh, sorry, that's the middle of the body, that's what it does. And then when you go up to the middle of the back right here, okay, everything from the middle of the back up is at the end of the hierarchy, so it all goes with the middle of the back. And then it goes up here to the, uh, uh, to the neck, uh, to this part right here. And wherever this goes, your shoulders go and your, and your, and your elbows. And then wherever your elbows go, uh, your shoulders go, like this, your elbows go with them. And then your elbows have their own flexibility. So see what happens is, each one of these things is like a, a control point, and it moves, everything under it moves. And then under that, it moves, and everything under that moves, and it moves, and everything. So in other words, that's how it thinks of it. It's got a very simple uh, hierarchical idea. And it works really well, because what happens is, if you want a person to walk down the street, and uh, if you had to think of what does each thing do, and where is it going to be in the next second, you'd have a hell of a lot of calculations to do. But if you lock them together, you can say, well, if my shoulder moves this way, everything moves this way. Everything above the shoulder, from down to off the shoulder moves this way. And then I can move my elbow, and my hand will move according to my elbow. So that shoulder tells my elbow what to do, my elbow tells my hand what to do. And it's a constant hierarchical movement. And it's very fast to calculate that stuff. And it's quite extraordinary. It's actually, it made it possible to do very complex animations. That simple hierarchical structure, okay? And so it's something that you might want to know about, because in the future, I am sure, and uh, when people catch on to 3D graphics on HTML, they will also catch on to the fact they want to move dogs and cats and people all around, and they want to know how to do that, and that will come to play. Okay. So that's something you might want to just keep in the back of your mind about the future of uh, what will be going on here. Uh, and that's it. I, I think I pretty well touched on the things I want to touch on. Now let me uh, set up the program, get it running, and uh, I think the uh, camera can see everything. I've got it set up so it should count. I believe it can. Question, you guys. I don't mind you interrupting me because uh, what happens is I'll do a lecture and I get 20 emails asking me something that if somebody had asked in class, I would have been taken care of. But I have to answer each person, you know, something. So if anything doesn't make sense to you, be sure just to tell me what you uh, what, what you have trouble with. I mean, it's not like it's complicated, but it is. What do you got here?
This is, by the way, this is what I mean by if you want to see the code, just do what I just did. Just click on that. And then down here, if you right click, you get view page source. You can see what it looks oh, like. There it is. Projector's not on. What? Projector's not on. They can't do this to me. That's the plug in, right? Well, it says that it's on, but it's not projecting. Now, what I've done is, in this program here, uh, I've simply taken, I've made uh, five objects that are simply squares, very, very thin squares, and I've built this, this object out of it. And that's what I want to talk about first. Notice that what you can do is I can zoom into it by hitting the upper arrow. I can zoom out of it by hitting this one. I can go left, I can go right just by hitting the arrows. And if I go into it, <coughs> pardon me, I can go around in circles, look around in it. Well, see, that, that's, that's what you got to be careful of, is that you don't go through the wall, because there is no, the wall doesn't protect you. Uh, in other words, they, you can go right through a wall in graphics. Uh, they have a thing called collision detection. It's an artificiality, and it's really too bad we had to do this. I don't, I don't know if there's any other way. We've done it thousands of ways. But basically, collision detection says when two objects come against each other, by calculation, you say, gee, they're going to touch each other. Don't let it go through it. That's what it does like in WoW and so forth. It doesn't let you go through walls. Sometimes it makes a mistake, and you do get halfway through a wall, and it screws up the whole game. But that is a big, big difficulty in uh, 3D graphics. Now watch, I can go right through that back wall there, and so I'll be out the other side. It doesn't care. Now the reason why <coughs> the reason why I turned black again is because the camera always looks at the center of the universe. So if I go through the back wall, which is in the center of the universe, and I go out the other side, the camera flips around and looks at the center of the universe as I back away. Does that make sense? So that's that's the peculiarity of doing this the way I've done it. This is not uh, First person. Do you know what first person is in a game? Anybody not know what that is? First person shooter games. You're, you're, the, you're the character and you see the thing from your viewpoint and you go through and do stuff. Now this is not first person. This is like a variation of it. First person is when, you're, when your viewpoint is the one that counts and you go into the thing and you look this way and you look that way and you do it. It doesn't care about the center of the universe. It just cares about where you are and what you see. This program doesn't work like that, and, and so far we haven't. We will do this, but I haven't done it yet. I wanted to clear up the problem with orientation. Once I clear that up, then when we go to first person, it'll make perfect sense to you. But to start off with, the first thing I wanted to do was to be sure that you could go into the object, and you could go around the object, and you could see the difference between that and the object itself operating on itself. Once we get that all down pat, then I'll, I'll, I'll show you a program we will be able to go through the thing, we'll be able to turn left, we'll be able to not go through the wall or go through the wall, we can do anything we want to do. But it, start, start easy, and, and then believe me, this is, the, this is the part that a lot of people get hung up on. I want to be sure it's very clear. So I'm doing it, I'm taking easy breezy steps into it. But nonetheless, basically this thing here allows you to go into it, allows you to go into it or back out of it with the arrows. That's all, that's all it does. And these are all planes right here I created, okay? And let's look at the source code, see what this looks like. This right here is the body. Let's look at the body down at the bottom right here. I'm going to bring it up a tiny bit more because I wasn't sure if they actually could see it at home there. I was a little bit nervous about that last, last, last night. I think that's a little bit better. It's a little bit bigger. Okay, so here's what happens. Right here. 
So each of those different sides is a different cube? What? Each of the sides of the cube is a different cube? The size of this cube here? I know, so those are all individual cubes? Yeah, these are all And they all make up that one cube that you saw? That yeah, they're all, uh, no, the one cube, yeah, there were sides. They were cubes, but they're very thin, see, so that little point one. So what happens is they're like this way, and this way they're perfectly normal, but they're squeezed this way. And then I took them and put them in different positions to build the room up out of them. That's, that's, the, that's, what, I, that's what I'm doing, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so what you have here is, uh, you see, you got one, two, three, four, five. You got five, and I made them five different colors so you can see the difference. There are five cubes here, really, but they aren't cubes. What they are is they're 20 by 20, X and Y, but they're only wafer thin. They're only 0.1 in thickness. So therefore, they're sort of like planes. They're, they're sort of like planes are. And so I took these planes, and here's what I did. When you first create these guys, they're all in the same spot. Every single one of them in the same spot, right in the middle, facing you, 20 by 20, and half, uh, 0.1 thick. So the trouble is, I had to pull them apart from each other. I had to say, uh, move this one, and move the second one, and move the third one. I had to move them around. And that's what I want to talk about. Before I actually get to the code, I'll show you what I had to do to make this work. Remember now, there's five of them, and they're all in this position. Well, one of them is going to stay there. That's the back wall. That ain't going to go anywhere. Okay, so that's, you can leave that right where it is. But then, what about the roof, the guy in the roof? Okay, here's what has to happen. The first thing that has to happen is you, you, you choose which one's going to be the one on the roof, and you have to rotate him this way. Step one, you rotate him over the x-axis. So now he's right in the middle, right in the middle of the thing, rotated over the x-axis. Second thing you have to do uh, sorry, it's right here, the x axis. Then you have to do a move to the top, and then you have to move him forward half, half his length to get him here. So, in other words, it takes, what it takes is three things to get him there. It takes, first of all, you've got to get him in the right orientation because he's on the roof here. Then you've got to move him up to the roof. Then you move him forward so that he's not in the middle anymore. He's out front. He's in the room. And so that's the first step you have to do. These three things is what you have to do, okay? So basically, you say, take this thing and uh, you tell it which axis to rotate over and where, where to position itself. And you do that with those instructions, the rotation and the, the, the position instructions. And what you do is you write the right numbers in to get it to do what you want it to do. And it, and it lines the thing up correctly. Uh, the second guy, you're going to have one of those guys is going to have to become his wall over here. So if you're going to become the wall, uh, somehow you've got to get him to be in this position over here. That's the, that's the first thing you're going to do. Well, what you could do is, you could say, okay, rotate him out, and then move him this way, and then, let's see, will he have to go down, rotate him out, move him this, yeah, then you're going to have to move him forward. So you've got three things you've got to do. You've got to rotate him, you've got to move him this way, and you've got to move him forward to get him to the room. So in other words, it takes three commands, it takes three instructions and the rotations and moves to get him to do that. And, and we're going to talk about how it's done in a second. But you can see the problem. You have this thing to start with, and you've got to move it into a new position to get it to where you want it to be. So all those five guys, or four of them had to be moved. The, third, the fifth one I just left there. I didn't move him. He was the back wall, okay? So the other guys had to be moved. So the thing is, how do you do that? How do you get these guys to move in the proper position? Now remember, there's four of them here, uh, five of them here, and four of them are going to have to move. So up above here, I have the instructions that makes each of them move, and I'll go through the instructions of what it does to the part that it's talking to. Notice another thing. This was called my, your, his, hers, theirs. Those are all different names, okay? But they're all cubes. They're all, they're all called cubes. They're made as cubes, but they also have this thing right here. So let me uh, bring down that big program from above and take a look at it. Okay, there's the render function. And the, the render function is where it actually rotates all these guys, okay? So now this guy right here, let's see what this guy's doing right here. First of all, he's rotating over the x-axis. Okay, so the first guy rotates over the x-axis, droop like that, so it's going forward. That's obviously going to be the floor, you can see, because he's rotated on his, he's on his face now. But he's crossed with the back still, he's like this. So then what you have to do, you have to move him down 10 to get him onto the floor, and then you have to move him forward to move him into the middle of the room. So you see the commands? That one tells you how the Y has to move, how the Z has to move, and how he had to be flipped over 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees, over the X-axis. So those moves put that 
plane in the right position. The floor is now there. The second one right here, it says, uh, it says the rotation, it rotates over the y-axis, which is this way. So you rotate the thing over, you take the first one, you rotate it over the y-axis, now it's facing this way. And then you say, uh, position it uh, in the x-direction 10. So you just flip it over the y-axis, x-direction 10 means you push it over that way, because the things are 20 by 20. So you're pushing it over this way. And then it says, uh, move out 10. You move out 10. And there it is. That's the, the right-hand wall is now made by those commands, OK? And uh, this one here is uh, you rotate it over the y. Again, this is going to be the wall, I think. So you move, move this one over the y. And this time, you move it minus 10 over to here. And then you move it out forward, and it becomes the left wall. So there's the two walls. So now you get the floor and the two walls. The ceiling must be the next one or the one after. Let me see which one it is. And notice they get different names, by the way. This one is the your cube, and that one's the my cube. I just put these, that two slides which just says don't, don't pay attention to whatever's in between. I just put these dots here so that you can see each one of these uh, is separated into the different. That's just your own you know, consumption. And it doesn't affect the program in any way. So let's go to uh, here, hers and theirs. There it is right there. Hers and theirs. These are the last two. You can see the hers one doesn't do anything. It actually, uh, the hers one, just everything stays at zero, which means that's the back wall. The back wall stays back there. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't have to rotate or anything. It just stays there. Now this guy right here is going to be the ceiling, I believe. <coughs> so you rotate over the x-axis, which is this way. <coughs> then you move it up 10, this way, and <coughs> forward 10, this way. There it is. That's the ceiling. <coughs> I'm sorry, that's, that's that. And that, that takes care of the entire movements of all these guys. And that's essentially all that's different between the last class and this one. That's, that's what we did. Just take these parts and move them. You ought to experiment yourself with these things. Play with these things yourself. Take the programs, change the dimensions, change the colors, change everything. Try to... Try to get some practice with it to see, you know, see what it does. Uh, I would, I would save it as one program. Then I would save it as different names so you don't lose what you got. But you know, just to keep on, hold on to it. Notice they all got different names here, uh, different uh, colors. FF is red. FFFF. What was that? A greenish color or something? Uh, FF is red. RG. That's green. And this one's uh, zero. It's black. This one is white. So they all have different colors, okay? Let me go back to the program itself. Bring it down a little bit here. Sure, I'm going to bring it down. There it is. Down there. And so you see, they got the arrows. See, you see all the different parts here. Whoops. You can see I have all the different parts here, uh, white and so forth. There's the white one, the yellow one, the red one, the green one, the black one, which kind of were like uh, accidental. I just put F's in different places. You can use any color you want, but F's not necessary. Any color, any E's, you know, any of the letters below F will work also. Okay, so that's it. That's the actual first program we should look at here. Let's. Uh, Let's go to the second one, which is B, called do it with B. Let's see what that gives you. So, okay, this one, uh, actually, I don't even know if this one has much different. It has left and right, it has forward and backwards. B looks pretty much like the first one. I don't know why I put that one here. I think I picked the wrong program. Let's try C. I'm going to try one more. I'm going to go to C here. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> what I did in this one here is I put a post in it. And all that post is, if you look at the code, all the post is, it's just a cube. Well, I made one side really, really long, well, one side long, and the other two sides short. So it just made, it, made it, you know, it just made a big tall thing, that's all. And then I positioned it so that it would be right in the middle of this off this thing right here. Then what I can do is I can go into it, like so, right up close to it, and then I can go around it. 
like so. So the post is in the middle. See, it's, it's almost like first person. It's almost like first person, but it isn't because you are always forced to look towards the middle. The way this program works, the way I had it set up originally, was it always looks towards the center of the, of the uh, activity. So therefore, uh, it's not first person, because first person, you don't have to look to the center, you can look any place, you can look anywhere around them. We're forced to look in one direction. We can rotate the thing, and we can rotate around it, but we're always looking in that direction. And that's the difference, that's the uh, a limitation that we have to get rid of. But for the present time, it's not too bad. So because what I'm doing here in this program is kind of cool. All you, all you do is you, the camera rotates along that uh, orbit out there. That's when you go that up the right arrow. Or it can shorten the radius and you go in closer and come back out. That's all it does. The up and forward and backwards arrows just shortens that radius, brings you closer. And the other one just brings you around. The other two uh, arrows just bring you around the thing. Okay. So let me uh, let me just show you the post. Bring that ah that post in here. difference in this one, I think, that we should be looking at is uh, down here, uh, this thing I call item, that's, that's that, the post, okay? It's a cube also, so <coughs> this time it's 4 by 40 by 4, which kind of makes sense. It's 4 by 4 on the floor and 40 in the vertical direction. And I call it a gray, just a CCCC, just a form of gray. If you have the same letters, you're going to get gray. Depends on how dark the gray is going to be as to what letter you use or what number. And that's it. That's how I made the cube. And then what I did is, by the way, let me go to where the cube is. That's called uh, item. Item right here. This is the item right here. Uh, ah. Ah. This is very interesting. I, I did something a little different here. In order to go in to the middle of the world and look around, I had to go around the pole, right? What I had to do is, if I left it the way we originally made it, where the back wall was in the middle of the world, I would have been going through the back wall, and I would have spun around that, because that's the middle of the world, and I'm always looking towards it. So what I had to do is, I had to move all the objects backwards, 20, and leave the post in the middle of the world. So that way, when I went to it, I can go around it and look at it, okay? Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to look at it. I would have, I, I would have went right through it. I wouldn't have been able to look at it. Because if I said go left and right, I would have gone around the middle of the world, wherever that is. So by moving all the objects backwards, I left the middle of the world right here, and I put the post right in it. So you can see what happens is I didn't move it anywhere. I just put it right there in the middle, here in the middle. And all you guys, all you other guys, had to be moved uh, out of the way. Uh, this one here moves 20. Why did I move that 20? Which one is that? There's... I'm not going to try to think this all through uh, in live time because I don't think I can do it. Okay, uh, that's that for that program. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Uh, now I want to introduce texture mapping. How we do how we do texture mapping? Okay. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. And change this to. This is the first program where we're actually putting an image, a textured image, like a picture, onto an object. So it gives you actually uh, an object that has a picture on it. Okay, that's it. Notice there's no picture in the back. Okay, but that doesn't mean there isn't a picture in the back. It means we can't see it. This is something that is, is going to drive you crazy for a while until we get control over the lights. We haven't got the lights on yet. Here's what happens. If you have an object on the screen, I have it lit up from the positive direction so you can see what's there, okay? When you rotate the camera, when you bring the camera around, what happens is the camera goes around and the light goes around too. So you're looking now at the back of the object where there's no light. So actually the, everything seems to get dark. But that's simply because the light is going around with, we're spinning around the whole thing. So when you're moving the camera, it's quite different than when you're moving the object. When you turn the object, it looks, you see all the colors as it turns. If you go around the thing, 
and the light is going with you, moving away from you like that, then what's going to happen is you're going to see the back side, the dark side of the object. Does that make sense to you? So, so therefore, if something all, all of a sudden looks black to you, that's because you're moving the camera around and not moving the object. When you move the object, it'll stay as light as it's supposed to be. It's when you move the camera that you're in trouble. Uh, I could move this watch this. I don't think I have a control for the object. Let me see if I do. No, I don't. Okay, in this particular one, I don't have a control over the object. But the next one, it'll show you what, how that effect works. Okay, let's look at the next one. Next program is called 2 right here. Now what this one has is this is a regular cube and it has a different picture on each side of it. I simply said put a picture on each, each side of this thing. The question is how do we get pictures onto these cubes? Okay, we didn't have any, we, all we have is a color. I'm going to show you how, how you do that. I'll show you how the code works now. Uh, I think I will. Okay, I'll go to uh, I'm going to go zoom, bring that down, go to page source. You know, we have it right there. Okay, how to put pictures onto your cubes, okay? Now, there's something going on here that's a little bit different. You've got to watch it. In this case, my block, just like before, my block is your name. You just put that name on there. That's all there is to it. But now I'm making a new textured cube. It's called text cube. That's what it's called, okay? Up here in the program, you put my block. Instead of just putting dot cube, you put my block dot text cube because this is a text cube, a texted cube. So what happens is you say new text cube, and then you put 20, 20, 20, which is the dimensions of your block, and then here's what you got to do. You got to put the names of every picture, which is either 256 or uh, 512 by 512. These are the pictures. I called one of them side one, I gave it that name, and side two, and side three, and side four. Notice that they, they're in parentheses, they're in quotes, comma, another one quote, another one quote. Each one of these guys here is a picture on one side of this block. And what this block does is one other thing. Besides just being there, there's only one block here, by the way, the only thing it does is see these plus signs here. These plus signs that you say that every time you go to render, move, rotate it a little bit more over the x-axis, a little more over the y-axis, a little more over the z-axis. It's moving it very, very little. But what's happening is the block is going through this tumbling in this very peculiar way because every frame, each, each axis is being tumbled over. Okay? So you get to see all the different sides. And you also see all the sides in color. I mean, the color never goes away because you can see sort of on the edges, though, where the light isn't. You can sort of see it dark over there on the right and so forth. But yours are, yours are always bright because in this case, we're not moving the camera. We're tumbling the object. And therefore, the light is still in the same position as the light as the object tumbles around. Okay? That makes sense? Let's see if I have an arrow control key here. Yes, I do. And there it is. I'm on the dark side now. See, I move the arrow, so therefore what I'm doing is I'm looking at it and then notice it looks dark because the light went around to the other side and I can't see it anymore. If I get around again and go back to the front side, like so, I'm back, it's visible again to me. That makes sense to you? So as I have the arrow set on the camera control, and this thing is, this is going to rotate in the box. As long as the box rotates and I'm in the same position, I can see it. If I get behind it, I lose my light. Now, I can put light on all sides of this thing. But the reason why I put it like this is because I want to show you what the light does. Light, uh, I can't tell you. I went to the uh, web uh, last night and just looked to see if it's still true. A whole bunch of programmers, I mean, these are programmers, were seeing black blocks and they didn't know why. And they're programmers. They say, what is wrong here? The reason is there's no light on. You've got, to, you've got to put it on. And they just, I don't know why, they just didn't see it. So this kind of things that happen. I want to be sure I cut you off at the pass so you don't get in that trouble. Sitting only in a black block, it doesn't make you feel good. So that's the basics for today, and uh, I'd like you to take these programs and play with them. Don't be afraid of it. Take them, copy them, and do stuff to them to see if you can make them operate for you. And see if you can change the size of the box, change the picture, do whatever you want, but get a little bit of practice with them. And that's pretty much it, okay, for today. Next time, more.